Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today, we're going to go over 3D lookup tricks you might not have known about. Are you ready? Here we go. I am going to consider this both an expert and developer level lesson. I'm going to use VBA, but the same stuff can work in a query or in a form. In fact, I'll show you an example with a form toward the end. But... I'm gonna use VBA, it's, it's not, it's the same thing. It's the same DLOOKUP code. But before we get started, if you've never used DLOOKUP before, go watch this and learn DLOOKUP before I show you the DLOOKUP tricks, right? We're also gonna use DMAX in one of the examples. So go watch DMAX too, it's, it's DLOOKUP's close cousin. Go watch my concatenation video. You should know how to concatenate two fields together, right? And if you're curious and you want to learn some VBA, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and then come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And let's just do a basic DLOOKUP example. I'll just put it in my Hello World button. Right click, build event. That'll bring up a code builder. Slide you down here. Right, and I've got status hello world, which just puts hello world in the status box. I've got a whole separate video on how the status box works. I'll put a link down below if you're not familiar with it. But in here we can, let's say we declare a variable dim s as a string, and I'm gonna say s equals d lookup. Let's just look up someone's first name from the customer table where customer ID equals one. I know that I'm number one. And then we'll D look and then we'll status that S, right? Just look it up and then status it. Real simple, we know how to do this. Save it, debug compile, and then we'll come out here and we'll do a little click. And there you go, there's Richard. Now, that's not that's not one of the tricks. That's just a basic D lookup. Now, before I taught you, well, if you want to get first name and last name, it involves two D lookups, right? You look up first name, then you look up last name, then you concatenate them together into a new string, right? Well, trick number one is you can actually return multiple values with one DLOOKUP call, and it's actually faster too. Instead of 10 DLOOKUPs, put it all in one if you can. So let's say you want first name, and let's say you want last name, comma, first name. Okay, here's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be last name. Now, don't just put a comma in here. You have to actually treat this like a string. Okay, so it's gonna be last name and double double quotes comma double double quotes that's a space in there and then and first name so it's going to take first name it's going to put quotes comma space and then a quotes in there that's what you want to actually have displayed and then first name okay does it make sense and if you don't know what double double quotes are again i got a whole separate video on that it's part of concatenation i'll put a link down below but now when i do this look at that it returns both fields at once. Bet you didn't know you could do that. You could return multiple fields in a single DLOOKUP statement. Want to add customer ID in there? Let's add customer ID and then a colon. So it says one colon Rost comma Richard. So put customer ID, right? And then and double quotes, colon, space, double quotes, and last name, just like that. See, this becomes a literal string inside the lookup. So it's only looking up this, it's looking up this, it's looking up this from the same DLOOKUP call, which is faster than three. And then it adds this stuff in as part of the string. Ready? All right, De debug compile, make sure it's good. And then, oh, look at that. One colon Ross Richard. So if you got multiple DLOOKUPs, you can get away with that. All right, that's trick one. That's pretty cool, right? All right, trick number two. I'm just gonna rem this out so the, the syntax is in there for the gold members when you download the database. All right. Number two, you can do basic math inside of here too. So for example, I'm just gonna copy and paste here. You can say this, you could say S equals D lookup price times quantity, right? Now I don't have all of this set up, so let's just D look up something stupid. Let's do, um, in my customer table, I got a numeric field over here. I got family size. Let's just double the family size. Okay, so you can do basic math in here. So I could say S equals D lookup family size times two from my customer T again for, for me. So the customer ID equals one. Or you could do, you know, price times quantity or any kind of math that you want. 
Okay, ready? Click, there's a four. Same? That's pretty neat too, huh? All right, trick number three is a compound statement. You can put D lookups and D maxes and all kinds of other stuff inside of D lookup functions. All right, you can use them as results for each other instead of having to do three different functions. Say, for example, you want to get the name of the last customer to place an order. Okay, so that would involve a couple of different lookups. So you'd have to go to the order table. You'd have to find out who placed the last order. All right, let me make it me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it me. So I'm customer one. I'll make this the last one here. All right, so now if I sort this, I should come up as the last customer to place an order. Oops, someone's beaming in. It was Odo returning from a security check on Bajor. Anyways, so to get this information, I would first have to do a DMAX to get the order date, right? The max of the order dates. Then I'd have to do a D lookup in the order table to get customer one. Then I'd have to take that customer one and do a D lookup in the customer table to get first name and last name. So that's three separate actions. Now we could do those as three separate calls. And in fact, sometimes it's easier to write them all out that way, but you can do it all in one call. For example, S equals, all right, we're gonna start with, let's, let's start with the outside one first. So we want the last name and first name. So um, in fact, I can just copy this guy up here, can I? We'll just do the same thing as this. All right, but we don't know the customer ID yet. So let's get rid of customer ID. We want last name and first name. Okay. From, I'm missing something here. Let's see. Oh, Got to have a quote in front of that. So the, the, this still has to be encased inside of quotes. Okay. So I'm looking up the last name and first name from the customer T where the customer ID equals something. All right, now to get this, I want the customer ID from the order table where the order ID, or excuse me, where the, or, the, ma the order date is the max, right? So we're gonna replace that one with an X. All right, now what's that X gonna be? I'm just gonna come down here and write that X. Okay, that's gonna be, and I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna put an X here, but we're not gonna use it. I'm just gonna put the command here. It's gonna be DLOOKUP, customer ID from the order table where the order date equals some date Y, right? And then we'll, actually I forgot to put quotes around this too. This and then this, right? Because we have to put the date inside of these guys. Okay, and now I need some date Y. Well, what's Y going to be? Well, Y is the max from order, uh, the order date from the order table. Okay. Now, normally we'd do this in reverse order. We'd look up the D max first. Then we'd look up the customer ID from the order table that matches that order date. Then we'd look up their last name and first name, but we can do this all in one step. Okay. So first we'll substitute Y. We'll take this D max. And we'll stick it right there. See, so this DMAX will run and it will fill in that order date equals whatever. Now, this whole thing becomes that X. And I'm going to put the X, I'm going to put this outside of the quotes like this. And that's one big giant long thing. Let's redo it a little bit with some line continuations. Like this. And then like this. Okay. Let me get rid of this stuff. Okay, so see how it's working? It's gonna DMAX the order date from the order table. That will become the order date we're looking up the customer ID from. Now we have the customer ID, we can look up the last name and the first name. Make sense? All right, save it. And now click and there's Richard Ross. And it happened all in one command. Yes, it is three separate lookups, but it's all one command. <laughs> If this made sense to you, feel free to use it. It's a lot easier to read the other way though, I'll be honest. But the other way requires some more variables too. Normally the way you do it is you'd say dim uh, D as a date, right? And then uh, ID as a long. And then, well, we already have S as a string. So we can first say D equals D max, the order date from the order table. Okay, that's the maximum order date from the order table. 
Now we look up what customer that is. So the ID equals the lookup customer ID from the, the order T that matches that date, right? Where order date equals D. Okay, now we can get the first name and last name, which is this, right? And this will put, we'll put that into S. And then this customer ID equals right here would simply be and ID. So it's three commands instead of one, you'll get the same result. But if you like writing it, this is actually harder to write and harder to read. So I don't know what the benefit of it is, but if you think this way, then feel free to use it. If you like confusing other people and future you, then use this. Why am I showing you this? I don't know. This, this is a kind of an extreme example. Normally, I will use it for something simple. Like I'll use it just to delook up the customer ID from the max order date. I'll do, I, I've done this before many times. I just added this third layer on it to prove the point that you can do it, I guess. <laughs> but I'll, so I'll often do a delook up and then throw a D max or even another delook up inside of it. Okay. And yes, for, uh, for non VBA purposes, let's put this back to one long string like we had it before. Okay. All right. That's one long command. Now, now you can take this whole thing and put this in a form field. If you want, I guess, I guess this is where it's a benefit because you can take this big, long, complicated function now and stick it in the control source of a field without having to do multiple lookup fields. That's a pain, right? We got to do hidden. You got to make hidden fields in your form. Remember the equal sign has to be right up next to it to use it in the control. So we're going to select and copy that whole thing. And then we'll come back to our main menu, design view, and we'll change this to last order placed by. And then this is now going to be last order. We're going to get rid of the control source and put our function in there, paste, and then get rid of the format short date. And now we got that big long function in here, right? And so now if I close it, save it, open it, boom, there it is. So I guess there is a benefit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't write this necessarily in VBA like I got it here, but it is handy if you want to use it in a form. And remember, try not to use DLOOKUP functions like this in continuous forms or in queries because it's got to run once for each row and it will slow things down, especially if you're pulling data over a network. Try to keep this to single forms, menu type forms with no data in them, right? For forms like this where you want to look something up. Okay, if you want to use it in a continuous form or you want to do it in a query, try to do it with SQL. It's a lot, a lot faster, especially over a network. So there you go. There's some DLOOKUP tricks. If you have a cool DLOOKUP trick or any of the D functions, DMAX, DMIN, uh, I got videos for all of the different functions, but I'm always looking for tips and tricks. If you can, you know, come up with something that's awesome, post it in the comments down below. If I haven't seen it before, I'll make a video out of it. I'm a lot of ideas. These are all the DLOOKUP tricks I know. I, I'm pretty basic. I'm pretty meat and potatoes when it comes to DLOOKUP. But um, there you go. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level.
Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.